What's up folks, Jeff Benjamin here with iOS Decoded. This is iOS 18.5 beta one. Check it out. So we have the iOS 18.5 beta installed, 7.65 gigabytes for my installation here. And we have build number 22F5042, lowercase g for those keeping score at home. Now recently we learned that Apple had indefinitely delayed the new upcoming Siri Apple intelligence features, which is arguably the flagship Apple intelligence feature, the one that they showcased at WWDC. And there was a sizable outcry over the fact that this had been delayed. People said that they felt duped. They felt like Apple was doomed. There was so much outrage over this and I feel like it was like over the top or so much hyperbole. I get it. Like this was a major misstep. It was promising something that Apple had advertised and then they weren't able to deliver that. However, I don't think this means that Apple is doomed. This new Siri basically has three tentpole features. One is app actions where you're able to do all sorts of things within apps without actually opening the app. There's also personal context awareness and then there is the on screen awareness. So those three things really are supposed to make Siri that much more powerful and that much more useful, but that's been indefinitely delayed. Now, in a previous episode of iOS Decoded, I talked about this conditional engine framework and as one of the ground pieces for this new Siri. This was revealed in iOS 18.3, something Apple was laying the groundwork for as they were working on rolling this out, because remember, this new Siri was supposed to come out with 18.4. So we know that never happened. And as we look in the code for 18.5, we see that that conditional engine actually has been removed, the references to it. So that really just kind of cements the fact that we're not going to see this new Siri in iOS 18 at all. This is something that we're gonna to have to wait for iOS 19 before we're able to see it. Now, that being said, there are some things that Apple has been adding to iOS, especially like in the latest 18.4 release, the new Siri actions, their new Siri settings actions that you're able to really go in there and have some granular control over various apps. Like for instance, being able to change your default browser for Safari using a Siri shortcut. That's the sort of thing that you're going to be able to do with Siri itself in the future with some of these, these app actions and things of that nature. So again, conditional engine has been removed in 18.5, but we'll probably see that come back with the iOS 19 beta later on this year. 18.5 also brings back the ability to quickly recover or delete all photos in recently deleted. So let me just show you an example of this. So if I go up here and select several of these photos and delete them, they go into recently deleted for 30 days, right? So if you want to actually, you know, if you change your mind, you don't want to actually delete them, you can recover them. So if you go in a recently delete it and you verify, here are the three photos that I deleted. But now notice, look at the bottom, you get these back, the ability to recover all, you can't really see them that well. So let me go ahead and change over to dark mode. I guess that's probably a bug, but here you can see recover all, or you see the delete button. And if you tap recover all, you can recover all three photos in one fell swoop, or you can delete them all permanently. In this case, I'm just going to tap recover three photos. And now it's just going to basically place them back into my photo library, just like that in the right order. So nice to have that functionality back. You can also now show or hide your context in the mail app directly from the mail app itself. So if you tap the little ellipsis in the upper right hand corner, of course, this is where you can switch between your list view and the categories for the new mail layout. But now you can hide or show your contact photos directly from that menu as well. Previously, you had to go all the way deep into the settings. I'm going to show you. Let's go all the way deep, venture into the settings for mail. And there you go. Show contact photos. So you can turn it off there, but it's so much easier to do so now directly from the mail app. And I wish Apple did this more. I wish we had these settings that we could access directly from the app itself in more places. You also have the ability to cancel or restart your Apple TV setup. Let me show you what I mean. So when you have the proximity set up for a new Apple TV install, I'm going to go ahead and go through the setup. You get the little authentication. Now, if I cancel out, now I get this new notification or this new little pop-up window that says exit setup. Are you sure you want to exit? Well, you can always come back and restart the setup later. And 9 to 5 Mac found three references to three different private frameworks that Apple is working on. The first one is called Cosmetic Assessment. And this looks to be related to assessing a user's device appearance for trade-in or repair. 
There's also a new Siri localization private framework and it's unclear exactly what this will entail or contextually what it will mean for the end user, but we'll keep our ear to the street and provide more details as we learn them. And then finally, there is a new sensor access framework as well. And again, we don't know exactly what sensor that is providing access to, whether it's something in current existing hardware or future hardware. But again, we will let you know as soon as we find out more. And there's an updated Apple Care and Warranty section in the Settings app. So if I go to Settings, General, Apple Care and Warranty, you're gonna find this new banner at the top of the interface like this. And then let me show you here on iOS 18.4 what it looks like. So it looks a little plain. There's no banner at the top. Apple has slowly but surely added these banners all throughout the settings in Apple Care and Warranty is one of the latest. When you tap that to compare Apple Care plans, there's nothing there quite yet, but you also will see a little revamp to the individual product page. So here, Apple Care Plus on the MacBook Pro, it'll actually show you the serial number and you see a little bit of a different layout, a little bit of some tweaks here and there, but it's nice just to have that serial number right there front and center for ease of access. Now, you also get a couple of new glyphs in the Apple Care Plus coverage benefits section as well, whereas those glyphs did not exist in 18.4. So I know it's very little minuscule changes, but nonetheless, nice to, nice to see Apple flesh it out. And you also have messages via satellite that has launched in the UK. Of course, this is not a new feature. We've had messages via satellite since I think iOS 18, right? So now you have the ability to have this, if you're a UK user, the ability to send messages via satellite in the UK, which is super nice, right? If you're off the grid somewhere, you don't have cellular access. Now you can see, see where it says text message satellite. Yeah, super, super handy feature to have and the back tap banner reappears. So in a previous beta, I think it was one of the 18.4 betas, betas, you have, of course, in the accessibility settings, the back tap option where you could double tap or triple tap the back of your phone to launch various actions. So in this case, double tap, I'm gonna launch the app switcher. Well, there's a banner that appears and show banner is enabled by default. If I double tap, you see the banner at the top, basically it just lets you know that's the reason why this action took place, which can be handy because sometimes like you forget that you have back tap enabled and then something happens. You're like, why, why did this happen? Well, this will tell you, but you can turn it off if you're a power user and you know for sure what you're doing. You can turn that banner off so it won't annoy you every single time you use back tap. So ladies and gents, that has been a look at iOS 18.5 beta one. If you appreciate videos like this, hit the thumbs up button because that definitely does help let other people know that this video is legit. And if you like iOS Decoded, be sure to subscribe for more. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.